Hey everybody, thanks for joining me uh, as we get into the Word of God today. My name is Pastor David. I want to look at something from Hebrews chapter 2. You know, none of us like uh, the unknown. You know, we can be so afraid of things that are unknown, very, very uh, uh, full of anxiety when, when we can't control and we're not sure what's going to happen and such. And, and think about it. There is nothing more unknown for many of us. There's nothing uh, more fearful than death. It's, it's often that great line, that great unknown. And many times, I know many of us, we struggle with a fear of death, the anxiety of, of the unknown. And, and, and maybe that's become more pronounced in this last year. I know for many people, the coronavirus and other things like that has brought a lot of fear. Uh, and, 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 and I, I know it's kind of a, a tough subject to take on, but I feel like today I want to look at something in the Word of God and bring comfort and encouragement to your heart. Maybe, maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you're facing a uh, serious sickness. Maybe it's just something you've dealt with your whole life. But I want to encourage you today that you do not have to fear death. So, Father, I pray you would give us revelation in your word. Help us. And Lord, let it not be my words, but let it be the comfort of the scriptures and the hope that we have in Christ that, that comes into our hearts and even renews our minds. So help us to be open to your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. So flow with me here. Hebrews chapter 2. Listen to what it says about Jesus in verse 9. It says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. It's referring to Jesus Jesus' incarnation where he became a human being and then he took on our sin, died our death, so that we could be made alive uh, uh, and, and, and made one with God for all eternity. And then, of course, it's referring to his resurrection and ascension. It goes on in verse 14 and, and, and in Hebrews 2 and says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, uh, he himself likewise shared in the same. So again, that Jesus, who's God, became a human being so that he could uh, uh, save us. It says, so he shares in the same uh, flesh and blood as us, that through death, his death on the cross, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. It's an interesting thought, isn't it, that the devil who usurped our authority, not God's, who lied to us and influenced us to sin against God, that, it, that, that, that sin came into the world and death came into the world, but through demonic deception. And so the devil had power or authority over death, meaning that if we don't repent and make Jesus the Lord of our life, not only will we physically die, but we'll undergo the second death in the lake of fire, which, which, which was not intended for human beings, but for the devil. But, but, but a, a person who refuses to repent and follow Jesus will end up in that place. Praise God, Jesus has died our death, given us eternal life, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. And so uh, we've been set free from God's wrath and the, and, and the punishment that the devil will receive. But it's interesting that, that the enemy, the devil, through his deception, brings fear of death and brings people into bondage. That maybe the reason we hide from our calling and, and, and don't fully surrender to God and things like that is actually rooted in that fear of death. You know, fear of rejection, fear of failure and all that, but really deep down scared. And the Lord is not uh, harsh to us about that, but rather notice what Jesus did. He actually took on the cross Yes, to deal with sin. Yes, to deal with death. But actually to liberate you and me from the fear of death. We can have hope in the resurrection of Jesus. We can have confidence in the eternal life that we have through Jesus. And so listen to what he did. Not only did he destroy the power of the devil and set us free from the fear of death, but in verse 9 it says, Jesus tasted death for everyone. He already took on our sin. Not only um, uh, the first death physically, but also the second death. 
And it says that he tasted death for us all. First Corinthians 15, there's this declaration uh, that speaks to death and says, death, where is your sting? Jesus has taken the stinger, taken the poison, taken the power and the pain out of death. He's robbed the grave of its despair of its hopelessness, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In fact, he says in John 11, when he was talking to Mary and Martha, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, those who believe in me will never die. I know it's hard for us to understand, but let me explain this. We have this physical body that the Bible just kind of metaphorically calls a tent. But when you put your faith in Jesus, your spirit is born again resurrected. Your dead spirit is now alive. It's the greatest miracle that has ever happened. Jesus rose from the dead, then he resurrected your dead spirit. Your spirit is alive, and the Bible says your spirit and Jesus' spirit, the Holy Spirit, are one. And so that now you are actually seated with Christ in heavenly realms. How how does that work? Jesus is in heaven uh, physically with his resurrected body. I'm here on this earth. But the Holy Spirit who dwells in me, who is the Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of the Son, actually connects me to Jesus relationally and spiritually so that I'm one with him and my spirit is already positionally seated with Christ. These are not just verses. This is reality. And so listen, when your physical body uh, gives out, your brain functions cease, your lungs cease, this physical body stops functioning. This is just the tent. This is just the body. This is just your earth suit. But your spirit has already been resurrected. You've already overcome death in the grave. You are already free from the wrath of God. You'll never have to experience that. And you are literally already one with Jesus. So the Bible makes it clear. There is no sting in death for those who are in Christ. You will never taste death. Meaning you'll never experience it. You, I know it's hard for us to, to wrap our minds around, but listen, Jesus already tasted death for you. You won't taste it. it you know, it's like when you, uh, you think something's going to taste really bad, you know, and you put it in your mouth and, and you're, oh, it doesn't even taste like anything. It's like water. You know, you just drink water. It doesn't taste like anything. Yes, your body will give out unless Jesus returns, uh, to earth. He, he will return, of course. Um, and so if Jesus tarries and, and, and my body or your body gives out before his return, you will not taste death. In fact, um, you will instantly be with the Lord. And if you've lost a loved one who's, who, who, was, who died having put their faith in Jesus, if they're in Christ, they instantly were with the Lord and you will not taste death. Literally quicker than the blink of an eye, faster than a second. You, your spirit will instantly be with the Lord. Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You will literally leave the body and your spirit, your born again, resurrected spirit, that's already one with Jesus, instantly with the Lord. Instantly. Instantly. You'll never taste death. See, we have to strengthen our faith and our hope in this reality. These are not just verses. These are not just nice ideas. This is reality. We don't have to fear death because we're already alive. Praise God. And if Jesus should return before my body gives out, the Bible makes it very clear. First, the dead in Christ, their their dead bodies will be resurrected and they will receive a resurrected glorified body. And their spirit will come back into that resurrected body. So it doesn't matter if that if that body is two thousand years old, if it's ash, if it's dust, if it's if it's in a tomb, doesn't matter. The seeds, so to speak, this body is just the seed, and one day our resurrected body will be the fullness of that. Uh, it'll be like the plant from the seed, and our spirit will rejoin our body and will reign with Jesus forever. And if we're still here, Jesus will return. Those who are in Christ who already went to heaven, they will be resurrected first. This is explained all throughout the scripture, but especially in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. And, and, and our physical body will literally be changed. See, so some of us won't even physically die when Jesus returns. Our physical body 
instantly in the blink of an eye, faster than a blink of an eye, instantly transformed into a resurrected body, never to taste death. <laughs> Praise God, right? And so that in Revelation chapter 20, it makes it clear that in heaven, in the new heaven and new earth, no pain, no suffering, no death, no sickness, no tears, none of that. That is our inheritance. That is what we are created for and what we were redeemed for. See, so we can look into the unknown and know that we will see Jesus face to face, that we will receive a resurrected body, that even if we, uh, our physical body dies before Jesus returns, we'll be with him instantly in heaven, enjoying the glory of God, the joy of his presence. We'll be worshiping him and, and we'll see friends and family that are, are also in Christ. That's the hope that we have. And we need to encourage each other and strengthen each other. I would even challenge, we need to talk different. When I talk about a brother or sister in Christ that is with the Lord, we need to say that. Oh yeah, they're with the Lord. They're not dead. We don't need to say things like, oh, they died. And we don't, we don't need to just use euphemisms like they passed away. No, I'm not talking about euphemism. I'm talking about uh, uh, the truth of our resurrection. My friends and family, my brothers and sisters who have gone to be with the Lord, that's where they are. Their spirit is alive and they're with Jesus. Their body might have died, but their spirit is alive. And that's why Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Nobody dies if you're in me. Nobody dies. So we don't have to fear death. And no, I don't want to go before it's my time. <laughs> and if somebody does go before it's their time, we use our authority in Jesus' name and resurrect them. But when it's somebody's time, the death of the saints is a precious thing to God. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of revival. Sometimes we lay our lives down for the sake of the gospel. And when it's time, we lay our lives down instantly with the Lord. But let me tell you, the Bible says our works go before us. The, the, the seeds that we've planted here on the earth continue to bear fruit and we bear a legacy. The people who have gone before us, they've done something for us. They've, 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 they've given us a legacy for the things of the kingdom. So let's walk in hope. Let's walk in confidence. We don't need to be afraid of anything. Jesus said, nothing shall by any means harm you. And that includes, we will never taste death. Come on, church, we need to walk as resurrected people. And let me tell you, if you're watching this and you've not made Jesus Lord of your life, you can, you can turn your life to him, tell Jesus, you're my Lord, receive his forgiveness. Instantly, you're resurrected on the inside your spirit born again. And though this body still has issues and such, uh, God can heal us physically in this life and protect us from viruses. But even though this tent wears out, it's just a tent. We have a incorruptible resurrected body waiting for us. So bless you. May you walk in faith in the word of God and in Jesus Christ. May you be overflowing with hope of the resurrection. I break off all spirits of fear and fear of death in the name of Jesus. Be free. Be confident. Don't hide from your calling, but live for the Lord fully, immovable, unshakable, confident in the love of God that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Do what God has called you to do. Don't live with regret, but serve the Lord. Give your life fully to Jesus, no matter what the cost or the sacrifice. It's worth it. We have an eternal inheritance in heaven. So be strengthened in this reality. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you for watching today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you'd like to start a house church, either with The Rock, a four-square church, or with Solid Lives, our global discipleship and church planning ministry, go to one of those websites. Go to therock.com for The Rock or solidlives.com for Solid Lives. Click on House Churches and fill out the interest form. We'd love to partner with you to advance the kingdom of God.